horrible situation in India. Three hundred over three hundred fifty thousand new COVID infections as of yesterday. Many people believe that these numbers are actually um, less than the reality. Uh, Narendra Modi, uh, right wing, I think some would say fascistic um, uh, leader yep. of I India, certainly has, a fascist. I would say, you know, ha has. Um, uh, botched this dramatically. They were uh, doing well, and then they um, they basically relaxed too early. And there is uh, there's virtually no vaccination happening. And I mean, it's a massive country, obviously, uh, over a billion in terms of population. And uh, <clears throat> it is a, a very desperate situation uh, in India. And meanwhile. Um, just the other day, we were talking to Ann Newman about, uh, vaccinations. I, uh, I, uh, did an interview the other day about, um, specifically Bill Gates's role in, specifically in the IP of vaccinations, but also his, broadly speaking, his role in, public health in the world. And this is the, the, this is a perfect example of a problem that comes from having billionaires walking amongst us is that their desire to uh, engage based upon their own self-estimation is there is no bar to entry for them because they have so much money. So if I walk around and I think to myself, you know what? I know how to uh, manage the the Celtics, uh, you know, uh, better than the general manager of the Celtics. And I have billions of dollars. I just go buy it and the Celtics and I have my way with it. Now that's all well and good for a basketball team. But the problem is, is that some of these people also think, you know what? I have good ideas about health policy, even though I have no history uh, no experience uh, in health policy. So I'm going to dump a couple of billion dollars into that field. <clears throat> and no one is going to criticize me because so many of them are upstream from my revenue. Or I should say downstream from my revenue. Well, he has a God complex for in, you know, to, to put it uh, succinctly. I I'm perfectly fine with God complexes. The problem is that when someone has so much money, they can act on these things. He destroyed uh, U.S. education for nearly two decades. And at the end of that run, his own commission study said, yeah, your experiment was wrong. And folks can look up the Rand Corporation's assessment of the Gates's um, education initiative. And we still have high stakes testing because of it. We still have um, attacks on and, and a desire to privatize our education very problematic. And it is a well-known story now that Oxford University was developing their vaccine and were going to uh, disseminate this wildly. They were going to open source this vaccine. They had done something similar, I guess, Oxford University during World War II. I can't remember exactly what, uh, what, what it was that they were fighting at the time. And Bill Gates stepped in, convinced them you need to sell this to a private company and uh, not open source this. The IP, the intellectual property of the development of this vaccine, what's involved with it needs to be behind a paywall. And as such, we do not have wide production of these vaccines. Here's Bill Gates being asked on Sky News in Britain, uh, this question. There's no follow-up because, of course, you don't question this guy, despite the fact that his only uh, bona fides at this point for public health is that he had a lot of money. It very little to prepare in advance. And in terms of that, there's been some speculation that the changing intellectual property rules um, and, and allowing these vaccines, as you say, the, the the recipe for these vaccines to be shared would be helpful. And um, do you think that would be helpful? No. Why not? Well, 
there's only so many vaccine factories in the world and people are very serious about the safety of vaccines. And so moving something that had never been done, moving a vaccine from say a, a J&J factory into a factory in India, that it's novel. It's only because of our grants and our expertise that can happen at all. The, the thing that's holding things back in this case is not intellectual property. There's not like some idle vaccine factory with regulatory approval that makes magically safe vaccines. Uh, you know, you've got to do the trials on these things and every manufacturing process has to be looked at in a, in a very uh, careful way. There's all sorts of issues around intellectual property having to do with medicines, but not in terms of how quickly we've been able to ramp up the volume here you know, I remember how shocked people were when we said we were going to do second sources in these developing country factories. Uh, you know, that that was a novel thing. We got all the rights from the vaccine companies. They didn't hold it back. They were participating. I do a regular phone call with the pharmaceutical CEOs to make sure that work is going at full speed. So, Oh, good. Yeah. Now, th there's a couple of things here that are just uh, 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 ludicrous. First off, the idea that he cited the Johnson & Johnson um, uh, factory. That factory is uh, essentially completely useless now. It is in the United States. It is in Baltimore. It has been under FDA um, um, uh, purview. And it is... Um, it has basically shut down the Johnson and Johnson production. They the poisoned up to f over 15 million doses. At the and, very and, least. Yes. At the very so least. Weird, weird example to choose, as you say. And so the idea that there's something unique about uh, vaccine companies in the United States is absurd. Um, it's absurd. You have, uh, in, in addition, the CEO of that vaccine maker sold $10 million in stock before his company, um, at least reportedly, ruined those vaccines. Um, so that factory is basically shut down. Um, this is something that we could have been anticipated. The idea that you cannot get a factory up and running to make vaccines in India, let's say, he used that example, with the, ten with the year in advance notice that we had is absurd. Um, and India, as an example, is, you know, to use that also is a terrible example because they are the world's, I think, number one vaccine manufacturer in terms of the facilities that they have set up there. Uh, it's absurd. Of course, there's the ability to do this. Uh, this story from uh, Nature, the key bottleneck in the mRNA vaccine manufacturer is a worldwide shortage of essential components, especially nucleotides, enzymes and lipids. This is because relatively few companies make these products and not in sufficient numbers for global supply. Moreover, these companies are proving too, are proving slow to license their manufacturing so that others could do that. That's the intellectual property. For example, every RNA strand requires a cap that prevents the human body from rejecting it as foreign material. It's the most expensive component, and the intellectual property rights for a popular cap design are held by one company, TriLink Biotechnologies, based in San Diego, California. Um, this is, uh, it's absurd. And the idea that Bill Gates, self-appointed now, um, uh, czar of the world's uh, health policy, um, we are supposed to be comforted by the fact that he is talking to the CEOs of these private companies whose job number one is profits. Period. End of story. That is their job number one. And uh, I would say to the extent that that's even uh, debatable, job number one would be their own personal enrichment and then profits. Usually those go hand in hand, although we've seen examples during the uh, plenty in the past that that hasn't. 